please stop trying to remember everything as a new developer. I'm going to talk about three mistakes I see a lot of junior devs make. We're just going to jump into the first one. Again, you don't have to memorize everything as a new developer. And I'll even see people like create flashcards and especially try to remember syntax. And they'll be hard on themselves when they haven't used it <clears throat> or haven't touched on it in a while. And all of a sudden they forgot it. It's like, I should remember this. How many times have you gone through your coding journey or learned a code journey and you're like, I should remember this. Why don't I remember this? It's like, I remember that thought pattern when I was trying to become a developer and it is so self-defeating to feel like I'm making so much progress and then poof, it's gone. It's out of my mind. I just don't remember it. Um, you don't have to remember everything as a developer. In fact, when you build projects, things will slowly start to get reinforced, um, especially when you're going through a ton of courses, right? You're doing coursework and you feel like you're making a lot of progress, you're going through a lot of concepts, and you feel like you should be remembering all those concepts, well, you know, a good course is gonna make you feel like you are, because it's a bit gamified, maybe. It's enticing, it, it's fun, and it makes learning to code fun, but don't expect yourself to remember those concepts until you apply them, and not just once three times, five times, 10 times, 20 times. When I was a developer at my second developer position, I've shared this story a few times, I'm gonna share it again. I remember the developers there were brilliant with CSS. <laughs> they were way above me. And I'm like, I wanna become a really good developer who knows CSS. I spent a lot of time with JavaScript now, let's get good with the CSS. And I remember I bought a thousand page book, I wish I actually had it in front of me. It's in my closet somewhere. Haven't read a page, by the way. Um, but I bought a thousand page book and I told my manager at the time about it. I'm like, I really want to get good with this. These developers on this team are really good. They just, out of nowhere, they come up with these concepts and they can solve a lot of the CSS bugs that I've been trying to solve. Like, poof, out of nowhere. It's like, this is crazy. How do they know this stuff? And so I told him, I'm like, I want to sit down and I want to read this book and I'm going to try to learn as much as I possibly can because like maybe I'm just missing so much knowledge. It's like, that's a waste of time. It's a complete waste of time. You're not going to remember any of it or you're not going to remember most of it. He said, the developers here just are good with CSS because they've made a thousand bugs and they've had to fix a thousand bugs. You're not going to learn the concepts really thoroughly until you start having to critically think about them and encountering bugs with them is a fantastic opportunity for it to just get embedded in your mind just a little bit, just a little bit. And then it happens again and again and again, and you start to remember it more that way. So please don't be hard on yourself just because you think you need to memorize everything you don't and you're going to waste energy and it's just going to stress you out just trying to memorize everything so go to the fundamental concepts and then apply them and do it over and over and over again then these concepts will start getting reinforced that's how you learn how to code please give yourself don't give yourself a hard time with this because i see a lot of people really discouraging themselves with this um and we're just going to jump into the second one uh Junior developers get discouraged too easily. Sometimes it's this expectation that you're supposed to be this fantastic developer. I've been spending a year full time as a developer and I still feel like I'm not able to build anything meaningful. I still feel like I'm forgetting these concepts. I still feel like the developer that I met at this meetup is way better than me. Um, that apparently told me that, you know, he just started and he knows React better than I do. Who gives a shit? <laughs> I think a lot of this honestly comes from just comparing yourself to other people, which if you feel like you are developing a bunch of anxiety or you feel like you feel discouraged in your journey when you are learning to code because you are comparing yourself to other people, that's when you stop doing that. And you literally just focus on going through your course and then building projects that are focused on kind of lining up with the types of jobs that you want to apply to you. It's okay to like reel back a bit. You don't have to talk to a ton of developers and just do solo work for a while to really build up your confidence because when you start fleshing out projects, even if they're small, it starts building that confidence. A lot of junior devs just get discouraged way too easily. And I think it comes from comparing yourself to other people. 
It's completely fine. And I encourage you to look up different implementations and talk with other aspiring developers how they solved it. But if you do find yourself like really feeling anxious about it, you feel like you're just <clears throat> you're doing a bad job, you're not learning fast enough. I think you got to do a little bit more self work. You got to build up your confidence. You got to take care of that anxiety. And there are different ways to do that. But please try to be proud of the progress that you made. And I think it's really easy when you've just been grinding and grinding and grinding and you feel like, uh, because I don't have a job right now, what has all of this been for? Because I don't have a job right now. I have failed. And this is where I really piss a lot of people off but this is why i harp on these false expectations so much because i see it destroy developers confidence and a lot of people will completely dismiss all the progress they made and you could identify this progress by looking at your old projects your old code which probably sucks you would probably refactor it that's a big sign that you are growing but a lot of people We'll put it all on this idea that because I don't have a job within a year, I have completely failed. Honestly, you might have just been going in the wrong direction, and it hasn't been a completely linear direction. That's what most developers do. Probably going to take you longer than you think it is. But always look at your old projects. Look at your old code. Refactor it a little bit. And like again, when you can refactor it, when you can consolidate it, when you can compartmentalize it, and start organizing your applications a little bit better and you can make your code a little bit more readable. Um, if you would change things about your code, that's a huge sign that you are growing. And the only, like if you are growing, you will eventually get that job. There's a whole, you know, set of skills that you gotta work on in the job search itself, but there are a lot of developers who aren't even challenging themselves. They're kind of just going through tutorials. They're going through courses and they are stuck in tutorial hell. They're not even building anything. We've talked about this before, but if you're not building, you're not reinforcing. And you at least are continuing to grow through a little bit of coursework, but a lot of project work. You, are, you would go back into your old code base, you would change things, you'd refactor. You are growing, you are moving in a positive direction. And I think sometimes people just need to stop with the grind just for a few days and go back and look at their old code and look at how far they've come as a software engineer. This growth is, you know, this is a very, very long path. You are constantly growing as a software engineer. And I think sometimes people just need to create a little bit more realistic milestones that aren't just get a job. Because if it's just get a job, it's really, really easy to dismiss all the growth and get discouraged and quit. A lot of people get discouraged with themselves when learning to code. And I find that a lot of people when, or a lot of people that can move past that are people that enjoy working on the stuff that they're building. They're like, oh, you know, now I finally see these foundational concepts that I've learned that might have been a bit boring, just solo learning those concepts. Now I see them applied to real applications. Now I'm starting to build, build real stuff. Even if it's small projects, I'm building something that I could use, that other people can use, that are like small features of maybe some of the apps that I'm gonna be working on at professional companies. When you start building stuff and you start getting those aha moments that things finally click, which they can take time. They really can take a long time to click, both with concepts and also like features you're trying to flush out with your projects. As a new developer, you don't know how long it's gonna take for that concept to really click. It take weeks. For recursion, it took like a month for me. I hate recursion. I still hate it, but I can do it just fine. Like if I'm tested in interviews, I'm okay with recursion, but I'm not an expert. But it took me a long time for that concept to click. And you're gonna find that if you are getting discouraged with stuff that you're learning and it's not clicking, oh, by the way, if you're trying to become a front-end developer, I highly recommend you check out Scrimba. I'm specifically talking about their front end developer career path. They have a fun, interactive way to learn how to code and become a web developer. And while that's true, that's not the main reason that I want to promote them, honestly. 
The main reason is their curriculum is solid. There are a lot of curriculums that do not prepare people to actually be competitive in the market. And I've reviewed a ton of programs. And to this day, it is still one of my favorites and one of the best front end curriculums out there for self-taught developers. And they're backed by MDN, a leading and well-respected resource in the developer community. And I actually personally run my own mentees through the program to prepare them for front end developer jobs. And if you choose to sign up via my affiliate link below in the description, you actually get 30% off if you sign up for a paid plan, but you have to sign up by the end of February to take advantage of that because it expires after that. Anyways, check it out for yourself. What do you have to lose? And let's get back to the topic. One thing you're going to learn is that you need to trust the process and that if you continue to try to learn something, you continue to try to apply it, it eventually will click. And because you put a lot of effort, Here's the key thing. You put a lot of effort into getting that concept to stick and apply. Now that's when this concept, when it does click, it clicks hard. It gets reinforced deeply because you've thought about this deeply. These concepts, everything that you're learning, start getting reinforced much more deeply when you critically think about them. You aren't just blindly going through a course. You are going through these concepts, you are saying them out loud, teaching that rubber duck to concept, trying to apply it to something small, doing a couple coding challenges with it, especially for concepts that seem a bit tougher for you. When you apply it, apply it, apply it, think about it, think about it, think about it, eventually things do start clicking. But that's the secret. It's to trust the process that this stuff will eventually be learned over time through application and critically thinking about it. So I'll repeat this again. Stop trying to memorize everything. Now, the third uh, thing that uh, junior developers are making a big mistake on, and this is a controversial one. Um, I don't know why it is. People get mad at me for this one. You are fucking up royally if you are taking month-long breaks from coding. I'm worried when developers are taking over a week break from coding. But I see this a lot. I saw this a lot with coding bootcamp grads, but I see this a lot with self-taught developers. But uh, coding bootcamp grads, a perfect example, like they'll kind of rush a bunch of that knowledge. And it used to be like three month programs. They rush a bunch of that knowledge and then they just completely take a break. They're burned out or they only were learning to code because they thought it would get them a job, they never really found that love for coding. And they're like, you know what? I learned all this knowledge. Now I'm gonna just apply for jobs for the next six months. They stop project work. They stop learning things. They just maybe do some DSA challenges and that's it. And all of that knowledge, all that money that they spent just starts to float away. These concepts in your head become a little less easier to grasp your understanding starts loosening because it's already very shaky because you rushed that knowledge and man you just spent a lot of money <laughs> and that knowledge never got reinforced that's rough but i see nowadays self-taught developers doing that as well i think burnout is a really crucial thing to pay attention to and I understand taking breaks due to burnout. Most importantly, I understand taking breaks due to life circumstances, like emergencies that happen, death in the family, stuff like that. But if, you go, if you're going through a breakup, take a little bit of time to heal, but use that coding as a therapy or something. I, I think some of the excuses people come up with for their breaks, they kind of know it's a bullshit excuse and they take it anyways. I think there are emergencies. I think there are like severe things you have to deal with in life that are good reasons to take a month off, especially like severe health issues and stuff like that. I want you to be honest with me. Of course, there are going to be a few people like, yeah, I had a major life event. Um, that break that you've taken... <laughs> That like two week break, that month long, month long break, that three month break. Did you have to take that break? Could you have like maybe coded two days a week for maybe like an hour or two each week to reinforce the stuff that you're learning? Could you have done that? Like if we're being honest, I think you could have. 
Um, I made excuses in my past when I was learning to code where I'd get a little bit of burned out and I would just take too long off. I didn't do it too often, thankfully. But it's okay to have a break longer than a week, but when it starts becoming a pattern, that's when it's a problem. You are, this knowledge is way too fresh in the beginning to let your foot off the gas. It's way too fresh. And if the idea of coding at least once a week for two years is overwhelming for you, I'm not saying you're going to lose all your knowledge if you take a week break or two weeks break, but when it becomes a pattern, that's when I see people just, their foundations just aren't solidified yet and their knowledge just goes to shit. They fail interviews. They're not able to build projects anymore, right? But if two years of coding at least once a week just sounds overwhelming to you, I had to really rethink this career choice. One thing I, I think we need to recognize is burnout can happen due to a, a variety of things, right? A lot of times burnout will... It can happen because like you had the, this milestone, this single solo goal of just getting a job. And you don't get a job, and so you failed, and it becomes really discouraging, and then you take a break. You're like, what's the point? These are the types of people that end up usually giving up. It's the people that recognize this as a shitty moment. Maybe my goals sucked. Maybe I'm just discouraged with a job search, but I'm going to continue moving forward regardless of that. When you develop that mindset, now you are the type of developer that eventually lands that job. But a lot of junior developers are taking a lot of breaks and this knowledge, it's just too fresh for you to be doing that. Please stop taking so many breaks. And when you learn a new concept, apply it right away. Please apply it right away. And then you'll revisit that concept later because a lot of these fundamental concepts that you're learning are usually the building blocks of your projects. But I see too many people, like if I had to like identify if someone is going to give up, it's usually big gaps in their learning to code journey where they're not committing anything to GitHub or they're not really... They're not building anything. They're not really coding and reinforcing these concepts. Even people that just constantly are going through course after course after course and they're stuck in tutorial hell. You're not going to want to hear this, but I really think you aren't far behind people who are taking major breaks if all you're going through is courses. You're not really learning this stuff. You're not applying it. You're getting dopamine hits to make you feel like you're actually growing. You're not growing. You got to build. I understand at the beginning, you don't really have enough fundamental knowledge to even build really, really basic apps. In the beginning, you're going to spend more time in courses. But you have to apply the stuff. You have to do it consistently. You have to code consistently. And if you can't keep up with that, it's going to take a very, very long time if you ever even enter the industry. So a lot of people don't like when I talk about that, but it's a big red flag that I see in a lot of people that I know are probably eventually going to give up. I try to warn people, they don't believe me that this excuse happened, this excuse happened, this event happened. I just, I had to take off because of this, most of the reasons are just bullshit, but you have to identify that with yourself. Are you bullshitting yourself? Are you making excuses because you're discouraged with the learning to code journey? Are you? actually being consistent enough to make it to that finish line or do you need to call yourself out on that and be critical of your habits and stop with the bullshit so that you actually can be consistent enough to land that job you tell me but please just start being honest with yourself with that but i'd say these are three main uh, mistakes I see, I wouldn't say main, these are three mistakes I see junior developers make. Um, I'm probably going to create more videos like this and start identifying a lot of the, um, just things that are holding people back that cause people to quit, that get people discouraged, that get people lost in their journey. I'm probably going to create more videos like this, but, um, if you, 
have any opinions but anything i said leave it in the comments below i would love to hear them